Uh, right up. So, I've been doing this for quite a few years, <coughs> and I've tried every single time to come up with something different and new that uh, you guys don't know about me. And I'll, I'll do that again today, but just for recap, that included uh, having a starring role in a musical, um, <laughs> being a budding artist, which, Pretty, you didn't believe me, but I showed you evidence yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, what else is there? I did some motocross back in the day, drag race, VW Beatles. Um, anyway, but, but one of the, um, so during the early 2000s, I was um, a pretty reasonable uh, corporate banker based in Sydney. Lent a lot of money throughout uh, Western Sydney in the industrial belt at Wetherill Park there. And um, uh, in about 2006, the, the head office guys called a few of us in and we started a mentor program for some underprivileged kids in some of the poor areas in Western Sydney. And um, it was, I found it to be really profound. It was one of the, the few moments, and I do it and have done a little bit of speaking, and I'm quite relaxed at it, but it was one of the few moments in my life where I struggled to get the words out during the final presentation. It was a young year nine kid from uh, Mount Druid Way, uh, was struggling a bit when he first met me and um, through the course of about six months and we met once or twice a month and, and had a chat and I just showed him how easy it was to be more focused and set some goals and, and achieve them and it was uh, yeah, a really good experience. So that's something you didn't know about. Anyway, today, uh, what we're going to talk about, and I appreciate the yellow and the white does go so well on the screen, but anyway, <laughs> you guys are going to have to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do, the, the focus of the presentation is to explain to you guys some of the problems that I solve as a business broker, and that way it should empower you guys, when you're sitting with your clients, to listen and engage and find out what their problems are, and maybe one of those problems is something that I can fix. And I thought the best way I can do that is to take you through a case study. So we're going to talk about Murray and Marie Bruce. Uh, we're going to talk about their problem and how a great business broker like Wilson's can solve that problem. Uh, I'll show you the steps that I undertook to help them. Um, uh, we'll find out what happened to Murray and, um, and Marie, of course. And then um, I'll close with uh, some steps that you guys can take to engage with your customers. And um, <coughs> sorry, and listen, uh, and, and maybe help your customers out and help me out as well. So uh, we'll meet Murray and Marie. So Murray, um, Mar Marie is a passionate hospitality lady, um, and Murray is a drummer in a band, and that's uh, Murray there. And the reason he's got the guitar upside down is he's a drummer and he doesn't know any better. <laughs> um, so the hard-ons are a, um, uh, and you can Google that, be my guest. Track the young players, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, punk rock band from the um, 80s, started in the 80s and um, evolved over the years and they're still going uh, reasonably strong, I believe. Uh, anyway, so, uh, Murray, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a good one. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, they own the cargo bar, which is under the Red Hair Surf Beach, and quite a large cafe, and it, it pumps, it goes really well. Uh, now, in 2019, 2020, they thought it would be a really good idea to open another small business, in Lambton, Elder Street, Lambton, so they opened up a tapas cocktail bar, invested some money into it, about 175000 and at the same time, and just coming out of COVID, just going through COVID, at the same time, Murray got a once in a lifetime opportunity to tour Europe with the hard ons. So, um, and. Uh, <laughs> it was a good trip. That, that wasn't going to go away in a hurry. So, um, he wanted to take <laughs> I didn't design this presentation. Yeah. Place, but they just popped in the head. Anyway, he, he, he didn't want to let that chance go missing. So, um, he couldn't take advantage of that and, as well, leave Marie in charge of two businesses and their two young kids. So now they are faced with the problem, they put a lot of their money and almost all their life savings into this new business and Murray wanted to go on tour in Europe. 
So they came to me and saw me and said, Craig, how do we get out of this problem? I need to get as much money as we can for the business, but it needs to happen quickly. <coughs> so the first thing I do as a business broker is be very and sometimes brutally honest with business owners and tell them exactly what I think the market will pay for their business. So often that's not good news and it's quite confronting for a business owner to hear that, but in this case, uh, because the business had traded only for a short period and during COVID it was interrupted, so the best we were going to do was about 120 grand. And I said that's optimistic. Generally, I think really quickly we, we're going to get 100 grand for you. And they said that's okay, let's do it, but how are we going to do it? So the other thing that a good business broker does is has a good database of clients that are active in the market at any one time and looking to buy and knows how to advertise and find buyers for the business. Uh, and again, that's what Wilson's do. Uh, and the other thing that we do, the third thing that's critical when you're selling a business, particularly in a short time frame, is to have the ability to negotiate without emotion. So often, business owners are quite emotional about selling their business and they put their heart and soul into it, and what would you be? And, and it becomes a business owner's identity, often, their business which is a problem for me because when we come to sell it, they don't want to sell their identity. So it's very important to have an intermediary, like a business broker, negotiate on your behalf without emotion and base your arguments on fact. Um, so when we price the business, I'm very critical. I look at the numbers and look at a very reasonable return on investment. And that's what the, the beauty of selling businesses is it's commerce. So it's going to be pretty simple for any accountant or a bank manager or an advisor to consult with a buyer about what makes sense in a price. Um, and so we get ahead of that and we disarm the negotiating power of the buyer by saying, well, here's all the data, here's the numbers, here's the ratios I've used, and here's the price, and that's cool. Uh, so that's what we do, and that's what we did in this case. Uh, with the marketing, so in this case, I was able to send this out to our database, which at the time was 3,480 active buyers. Um, we've got a little bit under that at the moment. Some people have dropped off. Um, we did social media posts and advertising. We're on 13 different websites, including Wilson's Business for Sales. But in real estate, the beauty is there's domain.com.au and realestate.com.au that uh, you know, if you're going to advertise a, a real estate residential property in one of those two sites, you're going to find a buyer. With businesses, there's 13 different websites that buyers look at, so no website's got a monopoly on that. Um, and then there is some very strong active buyers at any time in the market, so we try and keep a personal relationship with those buyers and be in touch with them directly. Um, and thirdly, so in this case, what happened? Um, how am I going for time, dude? Yeah, three minutes. Excellent. Um, so in this case, uh, Murray Marie. <coughs> so I found I found quite a few buyers that were interested in it. It was a really well set up place. We found a buyer that was willing to offer some money. Um, they put an offer forward. I took it to the owners. They said, "No, look, it's not quite enough." I uh, went back to the uh, the buyers and asked for a bit more, which is very common. What's not common? So this was during uh, December, January, in. Um, 2022. What's not common is in this case, so they ran this restaurant as a specialised tapas bar restaurant uh, and the menu and um, the, the cooking was all done by the head chef um, and she decided that uh, January 1st would be a good time to resign and leave. So uh, I had an offer on the table that wasn't enough. I got a little bit higher from the buyer, which almost was enough. And right at that moment, the chef decided to leave so the owners uh, then went through a very quick process of rebranding, hiring a new chef, which wasn't easy in this market. They found a new chef, we accepted the offer, but because of that turmoil in the business, uh, the buyer said, no worries, I've got a work contract in place, I need to work most of that out anyway. I want to leave the settlement period until the 15th, or the, I think it was maybe the 1st of May which was not a good scenario for my owners. So that was going to put them under time pressure, remembering that Murray wants to be in Europe touring with the heart on during May. So uh, anyway, what we did then was, 
And the way to um, an even good real estate agent, Georgia, you know, Nick, you'll learn one day. <laughs> 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 The, uh, the best way to motivate a buyer is to give them uh, the fear of missing out and threaten to take it away. So, and I did, in, in actual fact, have another buyer at the table at that time who uh, offered sight unseen $5,000 more than this buyer, but importantly, with a much sooner settlement date. So they offered to do the deal, get it done in a month, uh, which at that time was sort of early March, so they were prepared to settle before Easter. Uh, I negotiated with the first buyers and said, guys, no worries, you, your offer's good, and we've got a contract underway, but unless you bring the date forward, they're gonna go with more money, and why wouldn't you? Um, and so, uh, yeah, mysteriously, they found a way to get out of their work contracts and do the deal, so ultimately, <coughs> we got the deal done in early April, uh, and I sold the business for 95,000 plus stock, which all up was about 107,000 and some change, which is very good. Uh, and there, the, that's the actual tour dates and where the, the, the hard-ons were playing in, uh, in Europe. And yes, they did indeed make those gigs. And there you go. It's a picture of the hard-ons. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, very quickly, the, the thing that I want you guys to take away from this is when you're talking with your clients, engage with them and listen for the problem. And it may be that, um, you know, the Wilsons can solve that problem, it may not be, but it also may be that other people in this room can solve your business owner's problem. So, engage with your customers, listen to what they say and ask a probing question. Uh, and that's it. Woo! <laughs>